Modern Russia, a nation known for its tumultuous past, passed along between various autocracies and ruled historically by strong figureheads, be it during the Tartan period, the Imperial period, Soviet and even modern times. That being said, there is one part of Russia's history that not many discuss, namely the period of the Novgorod Republic. The Novgorod Republic, as we see in E4, is on its last legs 1444 being pretty much around the period when everything was starting to go down the Muscovites eventually taking over Novgorod and forming the Russian Tartum afterwards but if we go back a few hundred years Novgorod was established in the northernmost parts of modern Russia and that helped it massively it became a huge cultural and financial center being a part of the Hanseatic League one of the furthermost eastern trade post of the Hanseatic League and having avoided the Mongol invasions the Novgorod Republic having been the only Russian state that was not devastated by the Mongols they did however eventually still have to pay for a short period tribute to the Mongols in order to avoid getting you know devastated by the Mongols some of its biggest conflicts were with the small principality of Tver which had surprising strength which is something we don't see reflected in our particular game as in 1444 the strength of Tver pretty much diminished. Puskov also just 100 years prior to our start date was a part of Novgorod. It eventually broke away from Novgorod, established its own relations with the Hanseatic League and eventually fell under the influence of the Muscovites as did Novgorod historically at least but that's not what's going to happen in our game today because in our game we're going to change history and we're going to be crushing Muscovites. We're going to be a establishing the Republic of Russia, not the uh, Tartum of Russia. Novgorod starts with its own unique Vesha Republic, a government reform that allows the creation of trade posts, trade leagues, trade cities, gives one extra merchant, allows creating Strelsi, and you even have the same government interactions that the Muscovites have. Plus, we have our own unique mission tree, which changes once we form Russia to the standard Russian mission tree. So that's a double bonus if you start as Novgorod, you have the option of building up the northern bits of the Russian uh, Tardom massively as these missions essentially revolve around improving your nation, building a strong trade and financial center in the northern bits. So once you're done with that and you switch over to the Russian parts, you get the expansion part of the mission tree also as the Russians. It is a little bit tougher since you do have to fight the Muscovites, but after you win the first initial engagement against Muscovy, it is easy peasy in the second and third war to just annex what's left of Muscovy. We're gonna start it off by making the Muscovites our first rival, obviously. The Livonians also and Tver can be pretty decent rivals, especially since Tver is easily to destroy. They only have three provinces and 8,000 units, so you wanna do it before the Muscovites do, right? We also will do a standard estate run here with the plus one mana privilege for all three of the estates. Not to fear, we're gonna also summon the Diet and seize another 5% crown loan, so the only thing we need to worry about here is the 20 autonomy that we will fix as we go along in this campaign. A little bit of prestige also is going to help since it's going to make it so that we get more morale of armies, trade power, and a lot of other juicy modifiers as consequence. Indebted to the burger since we're going to need the money to fight the Muscovites and obviously the private trade fleets to go alongside it with the burger economic freedom. Essentially a very standard estate uh, distribution of privileges. It's also pretty vital that we consecrate a few of the metropolises that we can concentrate so we get uh, some extra patriarchal authority and take note we do need to take a few provinces from the Muscovites in the first war to get the permanent claims on what's left of Muscovy afterward. These are essentially provinces that were lost prior to the start date to the Muscovites. So the first war is essentially going to take that plus destroy most of the vassals so we don't need to deal with the vassal swarm in the second engagement. We also start with three heavy ships and eight transports. However, I, I honestly recommend you just sell all of these. This is just essentially really easy money to get since a lot of nations will be interested.
interested in buying these ships so let's see we can sell maybe to these bad boys 40 ducats maybe we can get a little bit more from somebody else how about you 40 also Gotland, you want to give me some more oh come on really everybody's giving me 40 ducats i feel like that's not enough fair enough i guess 40 is better than zero right and it's it beats the schnapps out of just uh having to disband the ships which would be the alternative right we're also going to recruit the free company let's get them over in ladoga so they get a little bit of time to um increase their morale just in case the muscovites decide to attack us on the 11th of december it's been known to happen it's not very common but it's been known to happen alliances it's going to be a little bit tougher at the start to get any actual allies usually riazan is a good option for alliance moldova also and even scotland take note though it's likely that scotland if you ally them will not help at all so keep that in mind it's like you know 50 50 that are gonna actually land troops to help you out good line just changed their mind they're offering me 60 for a heavy now hell yeah let's take it one thing to note is that whenever the war starts with the muscovites the most important thing is to avoid a direct confrontation with their bigger army stacks you want to just take out the 3,000 uh, smaller stacks of their vassals and then move in to attack the actual muscovites themselves we're also going to try and get a claim on Tver. unfortunately we were not lucky enough to um get a claim from the uh, estate agenda which happens quite often but it didn't happen today alternatively we could also just do the uh humiliation war for 300 of uh mana points which actually might help us get military tech for before the muscovites so you know what screw it let's do uh let's do humiliation war this can backfire though keep that in mind because it could happen that the muscovites attack us whilst we're doing that war right let's also make our leader a generalus he's absolute dog schnapple unfortunately let's do the attack yes boom shakalokos we're also gonna go for one stability this is really vital early on so we can start getting prosperity you need to have one stability to get the passive prosperity in your provinces and prosperity eventually is going to give us dev cost reduction goods produce modifier and autonomy change so it is absolutely beautiful to get this the earlier the better Tver seems to be uh ours now but we gotta attack their army we cannot enforce a show of strength unless we have a hundred percent war score that implies we actually have to take out these eight thousand troopers here and siege down the province of kashin that is pretty much the end of these bad boys and let's do zapisa deal we're gonna go for show of strength and let's bring back this guy from muscovy actually for now sendius maximus we got 100 of each mana points and the best part is that they've also fixed this here so we got the humiliate rival age objective by doing a show of strength uh peace deal oh that is actually pretty good because now we can do our first icon we're gonna go for the extra discipline and manpower recovery speed we're gonna need that for the initial war against the muscovites now seeing as uh it's taking their sweet time to attack me i'm actually gonna attack the muscovites myself screw this man no time like the present right to uh, commit the biggest warriors against these boyas oh i could have actually gotten odoyev in my trade league but now it's too late oh that's a mistake on my side i should have done that now i have to fight odoyev also which has what two three thousand units or something let's set volod guys the war target and we can even cobalt odoyev not really gonna do anything against them but we're doing it simply so well so we can get something out of them right since we're attacking them anyway to actually wipe out that unit and then we're gonna bring our troops over to the north and try and wipe out the small stacks wherever we see them avoid the big ones of course come on there you go bye bye puskov was nice knowing you we're also gonna set the defensiveness edict in these provinces since uh, they're definitely gonna be gunning for our fortifications right and there goes odoyev's army and uh, rostov's army perm's army i didn't even realize they were in here man i thought they're over there sieging the rest of my stuff Ooh, another opportunity over here to take out 3,000 muscovites hell yeah and our leader just died let's go for a military dude because we obviously need to get as many mana points so we can get military tech for before the muscovites do make him into a general also holy mother of god two five two what hell yeah now check out how fast our war score is gonna go up after we take the province of uh, vologda which is our war target oh that was a sweet one six thousand permian oh sorry rostov and belusrian troops that is a juicy one boys uh, that is juicy one now we're gonna do something that's pretty big brain we're gonna wait for these guys to move over to velsk and then we're gonna attack these uh boyos over here they're gonna get there on the 15th and our troops are gonna get here on the 22nd so that means they're gonna be gone from this province by the time we arrive which means it's going to be 9,000 with the Chad general against 5,000. So we're going to actually wipe out these boys also. Like I said, another 5,000 down as a drain. And I feel confident we can take out these 1,000 and then maybe the other 5,000. Let's see. I might have to... Um 
Maybe I should just go here first and then back here. Mm. See how many we killed already. We killed 41,000 of their troops and they only killed 13 of ours. That's what I call um, proper micromanaging of your armies, boys. And another big battle here. Let's go. YPS Maximus. Arrivederciis. 8,000 years. Oh, I'm loving this. I'm loving it so much, boys. Look at that. They went down to 20,000 and all of their vassal units have been wiped out. <laughs> 50,000 already. Oh my god, this is delicious. Oh, oh, what was that? We took out another 7,000? Yes, that's right. We took out another 7,000. This is all the troops they have left, and I'm gonna wipe out both of these stacks by sallying out my uh, troops when uh, when I attack them in the Fort of Novgorod, and then the same in uh, Luck. Best part also is that we can get an alliance with the Poles after we finish the war. So in the next war against the Muscovites, it's gonna be even easier because we can call in the Poles to help us out. Also, very important, make sure that you consolidate and shift consolidate so whenever you engage the, in these kind of uh, fights you have your troops as ready for those engagements as possible so now let's go ahead and do this click yes maximus we went up to 18,000 boys which was enough to wipe out that army and we're gonna do the exact same to the troops and look that's it that's the whole russian army they just started recruiting again a little bit but it's nothing because they only have 12,000 manpower aside from the 8,000 in the field so we won we basically freaking won already boys it's that freaking easy easy okay it's all about micromanaging your armies even though we were outnumbered like three to one we won easily it's not rocket science it's simply just paying attention plus this uh this chat lord of a leader did kind of help not gonna lie and that is the last of their troops now let's uh scour around and just siege the entire country right i don't know if i mentioned earlier guys but uh if we get 5,000 likes in the first few days after this video is out i'm gonna do a second part where we continue this campaign into the 1500s and fully achieve Achieve that economic hegemony that the uh, Republican Russia can achieve and whilst you're over here consider subscribing it would really help out the channel a lot and encourage me to make more videos like these in the future if you don't want to subscribe though that's uh that's hundred percent okay boys it's uh, no issue just um be careful with um with that wall of yours you know what I'm saying oh we just found where the Russians have started recruiting their final stand of an army here <laughs> and we're about to wipe them out of course hey <laughs> Kazan just declared on Moscow v2 boys it is not looking good for the muscovites who just lost even more of their troops wasn't enough to wipe out their whole army but stop trying to run away you muscovite scummies come on just sit still for once hey we just got the miltech forward that is delicious boys delicious leave uh one unit now unfortunately these scummy permians actually managed to take a hold of beluzero so um it's just stupid and I cannot take this province, but I can take most of the other stuff here. So I'm going to enforce this deal here. We got 137, 132 and pretty much no aggressive expansion. Nobody gives a schnapps about it. Cannot take any money from it, but we wiped out 97,000 of those army boyos and we've basically just completely crushed them. Let's face it. Look how beautiful we are. We even took the Puskov areas, which are really good since these are pretty good trade power provinces. We got an Emporium here and 11 trade power without this even being court and everything else right so now we're gonna go for the reconquest of vologda which offers us permanent claims on all of what's left of the uh, muscovite lands and we can of course eventually core this up not yet because i just got the uh, admin tech four so i got no uh no actual points to core it up feels bad man it is what it is boy it's it's fine hopefully kazan doesn't fully annex everything there though that would suck because they're allied to quite a few nations and i will of course have to fight them obviously whatever the case here but now the second bit is of course a uh, period of reconstruction as I like to call it before we attack the Muscovites, Tver and uh, Kazan again. Another target I have is uh, obviously the Livonians so I'm gonna get some claims on them also because we want to fully annex all of the Livonian lands since we want to have an established presence in the Baltic trade node which is where our main trade node of Novgorod filters into right now. Hey excuse me Muscovite pretender rebels can you just go away please this is not even Muscovite lands just please bugger off please please of course you freaking jackals you're gonna take advantage of the fact that i wiped out muscovy's army and then you're gonna take stuff for yourself aren't you you disgust me kazan you disgust me what did you take let's see well you took five provinces could be worse i guess on the bright side it does mean that uh well, actually i'm not really the bright side now that i think about it it's pretty bad that uh muscovy lost all of this because they're gonna fall prey to the livonians i mean the lithuanians if they decide to attack then muscovy is gonna be pretty pretty small 
all after. Oh, this guy already passed away. No. Oh, man, he was like literally the best general ever. Let's see what this guy's like. He sucks. He absolutely sucks. I really wish the AI could properly handle their events. Like the Livonians cannot even handle the Catholic zealots that they need to wipe out from the beginning to continue to get rid of the bishopric privileges that they start with, right? Wait, what? Allies. Vas- What? Kazan vassalized Belusero and Perm? Are you kidding me right now? We got a pretty cool government reform as our tier 2 one. The uh, Tisiatsky office, which offers Republican tradition, leader cost reduction, and the best part is loyalty for nobility is increased by 2% every time we recruit a general. So that's actually pretty, pretty unique amongst republics, right? Oh, let's not forget to get our alliances here with, uh, whatchamacallum, the Poles, and I think whoever's rival to Kazan, so let's see who that's gonna be. That's gonna be the Great Horde for sure. Yep, exactly what I was saying. I knew the Great Horde's gonna come in handy there. This means we can also cancel our alliance with the Scots, which, uh, wasn't really that beneficial to start with, to be fair, also. Uh, 10 ducats or 800 soldiers. We can go for the soldiers. Considering we're canceling the alliance, we might as well also just, uh, you know, get rid of uh, the favors we got with the right we don't want to waste those favors now we want to build a marketplace in the province of uh, Kolmogon because this is going to allow us to do another mission later down the line this one here where we just need one marketplace and we get six development plus trade power modifier and permanent claims from just having one market built it's a pretty freaking decent deal if you ask me you know and we just got the province upgraded this is level two in my opinion if we were if we actually had levels for provinces of course now let's Let's lower the autonomy because we got to recruit some more units and after we got those units recruited we're going to be attacking Kazan. It's high time that we take back the uh, rightful Russian clay from the Kazani scumbags and teach them why they should never never take lands from Novgorod. A big ace we have up our sleeve for this upcoming war is the fact that we actually managed to get this tech here so we're going to have decent units compared well Kazani have step units so they're probably better than us still but I mean better than the starting units right at least the eastern militia have extra pips and stuff plus we get the tech six uh, bonuses as well we're a little bit over our force limit and we're still managing to get eight ducats for a nation that starts with basically nothing that is a massive improvement if you ask me man oh we got 10k uh, 10 fa favors curried with the poles let's get these boys on the roll it's time to attack if we got the 10 favors already because we're going to be calling the poles into this war there you go poland riazan and the great horde is uh 100 000 units against the kazan alliance block so it should be enough to also get a general march we're at it three fire wow okay it's like we don't have anything really. Oh, and they're at war. They're at war with no guy, actually. Holy snaps. That is amazing. Amazing. Let them fight each other. Oh, Crimea. Crimea just became a bunch of the Ottomans. I have to hurry up before the Ottomans kill everybody in this area then. All right, boys, let's go. We're going to set the uh, province of Vedluga as our main war target. And let's attack Yes. Not going to co the other guys because I don't really care about their stuff. Let's uh, actually siege Perm down first. We don't want to have our uh, backs turned towards towards the Permian lands. They're dangerous folk. Trust me, boys. They're dangerous folk. Oh, when did Muscovy attack Tver? I didn't even notice that. Let's get a good look at the diplomat mode. So it's kind of Eastern Europe versus Asia sort of a situation right now, isn't it? Need to make sure we don't get stack wiped by the uh, superior step units though. So we have to make sure we have our troops fairly closely uh, tied up together. Holy mother, Uzbek basically wiped out the entirety of Nogai. What? They left them with a couple of provinces that I'm guessing Kazan's gonna take next. Oh, dude, this is not good for the Nogayans. I mean, I guess they really just don't want no guy on the map, do they? Let's see if we get a siege pip guy. Woo! -hoo! Okay, we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna get this guy a proper command here because he deserves it. You know what I'm saying? He's a chattiest Maximus. He get he gets the good command. And yes, my plan right now is to peace out Uzbek before I focus on Kazan properly, since Uzbek's got 25,000 units. I'd rather not have to fight those boys on the field. Command Uzbek, fall please. You only have one fortification. Ooh, ooh, okay. All right. Hot damn! That fell fast, boys. It fell at 21 percent. And we gotta wait for the sun going battle finish. That's gonna be a stack wipe for my boys. All right, is that P755? Are you kidding me right now, bro? Actually, what is this? This is a grasslands. We don't want to fight them in a grasslands. All right, let's actually wait for a second here. Um, 
I could though get potentially 615 ducats. You know what? I'm gonna go for the ducats. Let's siege down this stuff and get our Dukatenstein. We deserve those ducats, okay? What's my actual war score with them? 29. I can get the ducats. Dude, they are really stubborn. You know what? There you go. Take your white piece. We lost enough troops fighting your dummy dummy face. Let's go and take care of the Kazans now. Hey, go Poland! Poland kicking some uh, Kazaki ass over here, boys. Also, it just occurred to me that this uh, mercenary army's got no units to reinforce, so I'm actually going to Suishlide though this army and the enemy army and then I'm gonna recruit a new mercenary company because I got the money to recruit them So why not right? Oh looks like it looks like it's also time to get 250 governing capacity like the chads that we are and deserve of course Oh, I just realized we haven't accepted Muscovite as one of our accepted cultures Let's also get some manpower and uh, lower war exhaustion with the Strelsi and I think I'm going to delete this mercenary company right now It's a drain on my economy. It's pointless to have it really now now, all that being said, I do have to peace out Kazan because I cannot get above 50% uh, war score with them since, unfortunately, 163,000 units died for nothing because Shagatai is not reachable by me. So, yeah, it is basically a tough tomato soda situation here. Let's core up all of this stuff. And uh, on the bright side, we did get Zlatust, which is a gold mine, which is going to really help us out, especially in the early part of this campaign. We got a few more years now until the truce with the Muscovite, so we're ready for that, essentially, whenever it's uh, going to happen. It's just one war take out the southern bits here So nobody else can attack them and then leave them with these provinces and then take what left in the next war I guess in the meanwhile, we're gonna have to recruit more units and we're gonna have to um, Get ready for some wars against the Livonians. Oh, what they're not joining in. <gasps> I'm gonna attack him right now <laughs> Shouldn't have deleted my mercenaries. No, no, it's okay. It's all good. It's all good you boys Let's call in the uh, godland since they have a fleet that they can use um, in case they try to hide on the island of Osel We can prevent them from doing that. Ah the civil war in Novgorod Which is kind of what sealed their faith and made them become a little puppet of well a part of Muscovy really let's go with the mercantile faction since we won that uh, extra mercantilism and Let's go ahead and uh, wipe out these uh, scummy rebels I'm gonna send a few units over here to wipe out this army to sign one of these generals in there and let's send the other army over to kill off the mercantile faction I guess I like the name of this uh, province over here Dorp <laughs> I think a lot of you guys uh, also can uh, identify as a dorp. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're dorps. You're all freaking dorps, okay? Especially the ones that have not yet subscribed to the channel. You don't want to be a dorp? You got to subscribe to the channel. That's just how it works, all right? You know, this is always the case, I swear. Every single time I attack somebody, you got little old Poland or little old Kazan or somebody to attack them as well, to take the freaking glory. I do all the hard work and these bastards just, they swoop in and take my, uh, you know, take my lands. This is my land, bro. Get out of here. Don't touch it. Well, at least they peaced out and they didn't take as much uh, land as I expected them to. I was expecting they're gonna take more. We're gonna have to take their capital if we want to fully annex them, though. Riga also is not such a bad spot, actually. I don't mind vassalizing Riga so I can uh, get them to transfer the trade power to me in this node. Oh, what? <laughs> Hesse just... Be Wait, no. The Palatinat became the Ichiro Emperor. What? That is literally the first time I've seen them become the Ichiro Emperor. I always see, like, Hesse or Saxony or some schnapps the first time I see the Palatinat. All right, moment of truth is here. I don't care. I don't think anybody cares about me vassalizing, even though I didn't co belligerate the uh, whatchamacallum um, Riga. Not their business, what I do in my own lands, boys. There you go, Kazan Muscovy, literally nobody important. And now let's go back and wipe out those rebels that have been sticking here for the past trillion years. Totally not exaggerating. It's been exactly one trillion and a half years since these guys have been uh, just hanging over here, really. A great synod. Ooh, one stability. You what? Hell yeah, I'm getting one stability, boys. That's not even a question, man. 19,000 soldiers. When did they get 19,000 soldiers, dude? Wow. Um, yeah, I'm gonna need to get some more units. I think I'm gonna need to get a mercenary company then. Yeah, let's get the free company. Let's get them over here and let's bring the rest of the army so we can actually have the troops by the border when we attack, right? Can do the autocephalous archbishopric now since we got two stability. It's gonna give us 10 patriarchal authority, so that's pretty good too. Let's also build up in here a marketplace so that afterwards we can um we can do another mission we just need to have a marketplace in neva and we need to have full land force limit a uh, naval force limit so i'm recruiting ships as we speak right now i'm recruiting as many light ships as i can recruit i really wish uh, muscovy didn't actually attack Tver. it would be a lot easier for me if they didn't they always have to make things more complicated don't they let's see how much land we can actually take in this war so i'm gonna go like this since i don't want them to be attacked by anybody else afterwards i guess this is gonna be the peace deal and i'll let them keep the 
five provinces and take those in the next war against them. Coalition also nobody gives a schnapps of course so we are absolutely Gucci boys. After a mere 600 days we got Mohaik so we can enforce this deal. Get some money as well and Buyas no Kuyos. Five provinces left. Absolutely amazing. Conquest of Tver sounds Gucci to me and 106 overextension. Yeah okay that's not Gucci at all actually. <laughs> Alright let's do this in that case. Let's do this. Hopefully that's enough. Uh, it's not. Oh, that's not good at all. Well, I guess uh, we'll have to go through a few rebels. I am though gonna cancel my alliance with Riazan since I plan on attacking Riazan when the truce is over. So that's why I'm gonna get some claims on them too for, uh, for the time being. Boys, I hope you enjoyed this run. I had a blast making it. And if you want to see more, then you know what you need to do. Leave that like. You can also get this save if you're a Patreon channel member or Twitch subscriber as I'm gonna be posting this one on my Patreon. So until next time, check out this awesome Muscovy run. And massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. You guys are absolutely amazing and are basically sustaining me and doing what I love doing.